All right. So we basically covered the basics on how to spin up an instance and how to tie to storage, right? So, but what good is a computer system if you can't monitor performance? And that's one of the things that we're going to kind of talk about today is how do we monitor performance inside of AWS so that if something starts flaking out, I know how to go do this. So one of the things that they provide you is something called CloudWatch. And this allows you to monitor everything that's going on within your particular system. You can cut your own rules. You can use the ones that they've got cooking. Um, there's all sorts of things that they can do for you. And it basically breaks down into two chunks. Your alarms, things that are going on, and your metrics. Right? Metrics are a way of finding out what is going on with your box. So before I turned everything off this morning, right, we had a zero CPU utilization. Our read writes were about 80K. So not a big deal, but you can use this to monitor the performance of what you've got going. If you work in a company that's really specifically odd and they really want to watch how much money they're spending, you can actually set specific metrics around billing. If I don't want to spend more than $100 a minute, then I can set my alarms that if it says if I spend $101 a minute, drop me a note and then I can go out there and make sure everything is like being kosher and that someone isn't doing something silly. There's a whole bunch of pre-built alarms and metrics, right? Odds are highly likely that you will not need to make one, but it's always good to know what you got, right? So if we have all metrics, right, it basically breaks down into everything that you could ever want to do. So you can do electric, oh gosh, elastic block storage volume. If you have a Linux box and you don't want it to go over eight gigs and it goes to 801, you can set a metric that if, it, if, it, if any elastic block storage goes over 8 gigs, then I'm going to want you to tell me about it. Yes, sir? Can you also put stops on that so it won't allow it to do certain things? Mm. Is it just alarms? Yes, you can do that. So if we say, so these are all the, the volume things that you can do with it, right? And then what it does is it gives you a time range. Oh, wait, I'm actually in reading. EBS. All right. So if my volume idle time, right? If we go ahead and we edit, we can say how much I want to do from six hours ago. You can actually view out from two week range for a specific volume. In other words, how long was it idle? How much did I not use? If I did not use this, then why do I need it? Right. So it's kind of a neat way of taking a look at how your systems are being used. You can actually create an alarm on this. So if we go right? And this alarm will enter the alarm state when volume idle time is equal to is less than or equal or greater than or equal to less than or equal to zero for however many minutes. So 300 minutes for six hours, right? Volume model time. So in other words, if that thing ain't screaming at 55 miles an hour, then you're stuck on I-5. So you just go ahead and you create. And you can have it email for you, right? And again, you can say your machine is working too hard, CPU alarm. I had actually made this alert a while ago, right? Well, let's create a new email topic. And then who do I want to send it to? All right, and then we just add the action. And then boom, there's my new alarm. And then once we've got that, then we're good. When state is an alarm, action type, send notification to new topic. Create an alarm. And boom, that's all there is to it. All right, let's say I wanted to, you were saying, what was your question again? Yeah. So if we say volume right bytes, and let's create a new alarm on this one. So if we go create alarm, all right. Alarm state if volume right 
bytes, right? Remember, this is bytes, is greater than let's call it, let's call it 25, right? If we're shoving that much data down the pipe, that is, oh my God, for five minutes, right? Five minutes, that's a pretty well sustained, oh my God. Yeah, if if you're all of a sudden became a BitTorrent site, you're gonna see that, right? Now we can also say not just alarm, okay we can say okay or insufficient data so what we're going to do is we're going to send new email topic topic is and we add the action to it right you can also do the auto scaling policy right if we have auto scaling set up which I don't have on this because I don't really use auto scale, right? So, but because all my EBSs are down right now because there's no and nothing attached to them, we can go kind of with it. But that's basically what you do is you write alarms based on the most horrible things that can happen to you. Yes, sir. Yes, if you turn on auto scaling, which I don't have. I haven't set up auto scaling. I didn't, I never subscribed to it okay. because I'm. There is that if you want it, but the, but, but, and this is where you come into how do I system administer? I am a whole lot more AR, right? I want to know why something is going on, so I don't want it to just automatically shut down. I want to be able to go in there and go poke around and see what's going on, right? Because it may be a, a information security attack. It may be something else going on. It may be really bad code on my part that I wrote. So instead of just killing it, I, as a system administrator, want to be able to go in and say, why is this happening, right? So if you're in debug and you know your code isn't clean, then you might not want to auto scale, right? Because if it starts seeing things like you're starting to get you know, 250 megabits every five minutes, that may be indicative of bad code, not necessarily overuse. And if you start spinning up more and more instances, around that, all you're doing is feeding bad code. So, and again, I'm not a programmer, so I write really crappy code. <laughs> it does the job I want it to do, but it's not elegant, it's not professional. It looks like two five-year-olds and a monkey hacked it together, right, honestly. So, I'm, that's why I administer the way I administer. So, that's how I kind of scale it to me, right. So I would much rather see an alarm than so I can go poke around and see what's going on. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 Every I run everything through my cell phone or through my iPad, and it's actually really kind of sweet because we actually had an, an alarm alert when I was down at the Nisqually um, Wildlife Refuge. So I'm out in the middle of hunk and nowhere. I mean, like literally banjo playing country. And the system started going a little bit crazy. And I was actually in the middle of the pagoda there, all the way at the far end of the park, playing around with AWS, trying to figure out what's going on. And my wife's like tapping her foot. Come on, time to go. What are you doing? I'm just working, hon. You're in the middle of a park. This was our day off. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so yes, I do use it and it does work and it is actually really kind of brilliant unless you're supposed to be doing something else at the time. So alarms make sense, right? You want to go through and make sure that you're measuring everything the way that you want to measure it for your performance and what you want to do. And again, there's all sorts of different kinds of metrics. You can do it by write, you can do it by operations, you can do it by read. So if you know you have a big, huge read-only database, right, and you know that your database should have X amount of traffic, right, if you hit over that, then that means that database is going to start bogging down. Then you would alert to spin up a new instance. Yes? No, because all you really do is your, your statistic is real simple math, right? Um, there are programs that you can buy on top of this that will give you that kind of fine grain.
but the one thing about Amazon is really just baseline. Right? So all you've really got is average, minimum, maximum, sum, and samples. And samples is over a period of time. Right? You can't specify it. And then it's over a specific time range, one day, six hours, one hour. So you're really kind of fixed on what you can do. Right? So volume reads, um, if you're using EC2, CPU utilization. So if you have something that's usually that's doing this, if you create an alarm, if CPU utilization is at 80% for five for let's say 15 minutes, right? Then I can alarm or say it's okay, send notification, add action, and all the rest of it, right? So it's all the same thing. Now. One of the things you can do, and we'll get into this as soon as we get the basics down, is if you say your CPU utilization is 80%, then you can get it to spin up another instance. Right? So there are automated actions that you can take, but this is just the alarming and alerting. Right? I'm not AR enough to want to go out and spin up a new instance every time someone gets spiky on what I'm doing out in the cloud. So I will let it go ahead and do that, and when CPU utilization on the new one comes down to zero, then I'll just shut it down. Right? You can also do it by network, network in, network out. You can do it by aggregated images, right? and that means if the image does X, Y, and Z, then I'll alert. So if my CPU and my network jack out through the window, then I can go do other things. So, but with the alarms, that's really all you're doing you're setting a monitor alarm and a threshold. Right? You're not asking it to do additional things. You're just saying, let me know if something bad happens. Right? So it's sort of like giving a cell phone to your kid before they wander off to junior high school. Give me a call if something bad happens and they never call you. The assumption is nothing bad ever happens. They're talking to their friends all day on that cell phone, but you try to call them, the cell phone's jammed because they're on the phone all day long. But all you're doing with alarms is telling it to go do, to tell me if something bad is happening. Does it kind of make sense? Any questions on, on how to write an alarm or an alert? Okay. So that means you guys can pick up the standard and actually go write an alarm for me today. All right? This would be by, this would be overall. When you're doing an overall, an overall alarm, Right, so when I did the alarm here, right, volume idle time, insufficient data because I set it up for zero to three hundred minutes, right, and then what it will do is just drop me an email, and then if I really don't want this anymore, you just right click it and you can just delete it, and you're you're done. So it kind of makes sense? Okay. So your first task today is to go and create an alarm. 